All right. All right, where are we going to put Allison this? Allison is starting his periscope. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know where I'm going to put this. Right, this is see. weird. We're just going to we're going to keep it right there. Yeah. We got some, all right, there we go. Isn't that crazy how that happened? <laughs> I know. That is the thing. Yep. And People are all about the internet. We're already all right, getting some highs. All right. It's, look at all those hearts, man. So, so this is going to be fun. Uh, does anyone want to guess how many people are now watching this on the yeah. internet? Man, you think way too much yeah. of me. <laughs> <laughs> That's very flattering. <laughs> no, we are, we are at now 149, 149. That's people. Good. 153. Yeah. yeah, that fast. So. Periscope's pretty. That's, I mean, that's more people than I've ever gotten on Periscope in three seconds. <laughs> This is Emma, everybody. She's going to be moderating. Hi. Uh, she's not. Um, and, and we have a very chill panel, so at some point, hi guys, we at do. some point we're going to turn to the internet for questions. Yeah, we totally will. Um, just in case everybody who's here just wants to chill and just watch yep. us talk about stupid Absolutely. stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. But hi, I saw you guys were looking for somebody to periscope the panel, and I figured this is a better view. Anyway. Yeah, exactly. You get, a, you get a nice view of your face that yeah. way, yeah. Talison. Here, now I have to figure out how to do this without looking like a complete fool. Without looking like a complete fool. I wonder if we could like use that mic stand. To like, there does we it, go. Does it go? It, does it do that? Uh, I think it will. Yeah, there we go. Is it gonna fall off? Of course it is. It's yeah. Well, I mean, naturally. Hey, Actually, hey, that's pretty go. good. That's awesome. Oh, they fixed Periscope. Because for a while on Periscope, if you turned your camera to be landscape, you couldn't have the questions show up. But I'm I'm glad to see that they. Uh, and now we have 300 people. That they sorted that out. All right, here we go. All right, guys. Do, do you all know what Periscope is, right? Yeah. Like, this is okay. Good. I got drunk on Christmas and used Periscope for five minutes and regretted every minute of it. <laughs> you can't find those. Those we have been deleted at, for like the seven of you who saw it. At uh, at Salt Lake Comic Con last year, we did. Uh, we were just par we got drunk in our hotel room and we're periscoping and we were all wearing kigurumis and we got some interesting comments on there. Uh, wonderful world of Periscope. All right, guys, welcome. You're all here to see this man, Talson Jappy. Hello. This is him. He's the he's the man now. I don't know if any of you guys uh, follow Talison on social media, but uh, Talison, one of his uh, crowning achievements in his early career was playing a strawberry. <laughs> yeah, that happened. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that, that's there's a story there. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Because you because you you grew up in Los Angeles. Oh yeah. And you started off as a child actor. Oh yeah. So um, tell tell us some child acting tales of your. Okay, uh, all right, a, a brief sum up for, for anybody who doesn't know exactly where I come from and what, what happened. Um, <laughs> what happened? <laughs> uh, my name is Talison Jaffe. I'm a, currently I'm a, a voice actor and, I love saying this, a professional Dungeons and Dragons player. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Not Thanks too many people get to say that. Uh, no, it's weird. Um, yeah. And has, and wow, it's a really great way of like going out into the world and deciding who you want to talk to and who you don't. Is mm -hmm. I'm a f professional Dungeons and Dragons player. And then like they turn around and walk away. And I'm like, I'm so okay. glad I didn't have to have that conversation. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. You're right. That is a really good gauge. Oh. No, but so you, so you're a voice actor, a professional Dungeons and Dragons player, but as a kid, you I were an actor, actor. I started as a child actor. This is, this is where the weird gets. I started as a child actor. Um, I'm from a, it's always getting into the talk about myself mode. Yeah. Because they tell you not to do that, and then you have to do that here. Yeah, I know. It's weird. <sighs> I know. Uh, I started as a child actor. I'm from a, a film and television family uh, going back literally four generations. My, my great-grandmother was a silent film actress. Uh, my great-grandfather was a silent film producer. They, they, they breed. That's what happens. That's mm -hmm. why you become a producer, so marry mm -hmm. an actress. Um, Back then, and so you can marry and 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 interbreed, and then and then other. and then breed really really attractive, clever people. Yeah, it's well, like there slow, you go. It's our, that's why like four generations in LA, and we're all just brilliant and yeah. attractive. <laughs> Except me, I don't know what happened. Are <laughs> you okay? Yeah. Uh, I will take questions from the audience eventually. We will, yeah, guys, don't worry. We're gonna get to you in just a second. Um, and so I literally, I started, I, I started as an actor literally at six months old. I have a SAG card from the time I was oh six God, months old, crazy. doing like Hallmark commercial commercial work. Um, I did a bunch of film. Okay. I did a, a movie called Mr. Mom, uh, which like two people in this audience are old enough to have seen. <laughs> Yay. Um, <laughs> I made a film called 2010, a film called Explorers. Um, I did television for, for many years. I did two years on a show with Suzanne Summers called She's the Sheriff. Uh, episodes oh. of like Webster, Facts of Life. I basically, I didn't actually meet anybody my own age who wasn't a fully employed uh, working actor until I was about 13. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Um, and then, uh, after 13 or 14 years of just working for a living, uh, decided that I kind of wanted to be a real boy and, and, okay. and have a fun haircut. And literally one day was like, 
I, I, I no, I can say this now. I was I had an audition for Baywatch. Ah, um, you no longer have to. Well, you're no longer uh, under that NDA. <laughs> it's long gone. And it, it's, it's everybody involved is dead now. Uh, hope if my plan worked. Uh, and it was the worst script I'd ever read. It was awful, and it was cheesy, and it was stupid, and it made me unhappy, and I couldn't do it without laughing. It was like this big, like, my grandfather's dead, and I will always remember him because of how I jump up and down the shower. It was, it was so stupid. Oh God, it was, it was, it was, it was a stupid that defied comprehension. And I kept giggling because it was so stupid. And hmm. my dad said the smartest thing he's ever said. Uh, sorry if you're watching, Dad. Uh, <laughs> he was just like, well, if you do, if you if you can't take this seriously, you shouldn't be doing it. I'm like, oh my God, you're right. Uh, <laughs> oh my God, I'm gonna be in a room full of like 12 other kids who are gonna be desperately learning their lines for this scene and taking it super seriously and I'm being an asshole. Are there any, anybody mind if I swear? I'm so sorry. Uh -huh. Okay, we're all cool. good with it. We're cool, all okay, right. Cool, yeah. Sorry, internet. Um, I, don't, I don't see any babies in the audience. I, I, I try not to swear outside this room in the con. Yeah, um, I got you. So yeah, I said I quit and I want fun hair. And, and, and I, here we are. I quit and dyed my hair. I called my agent that day and quit and dyed my hair and went to real school and met real, real children, which was a terrible mistake, I realize now. Mm -hmm. I didn't know at the time. Children are awful. Holy cow. Uh, <laughs> sure you guys know that. Yeah. I, I didn't. Uh, you didn't know that kids were terrible? I'd never met any. And then like, I, went, I went to school. I'm like, That's fair. can't we be reasonable? Yep. Yep. So, when, so you, went, you went back into the real world and dealt with all of the awful children. And then when did you sort of transition back into the... The entertainment industry, though, not not per se in the same sort of role that you were in before. Well, it, L.A. is really interesting because you never really leave it in L.A. Because yeah. everybody's kind of, I like, I, I was going to a school full of kids who, I mean, like, well, my, at first I did a year in Colorado, which right. is weird. But um, at least in L.A., everybody is like, they're tangentially doing things. Right, and it's right. All, so you never really leave. Um, I wasn't, I was trying to be a normal and have fun but I really got into anime and Japanese cartoons mm -hmm. and I had my friend Nick DeBar and a couple other friends and we started the first Japanese anime and manga club at our high school and I really got into comic books and actually the guy who got me into comic books is here at this convention right now uh, the guy who sold me my first comic books his name is Steve Houston he's at Torpedo Comics you should go buy expensive things from him <laughs> he's big and British and has opinions um it's great that's uh, awesome but, and I, I became kind of a fanboy, and one of the things that was happening at the time, uh, anime was just starting in the United States. It was like AnimeCon 91, 92. Mm. Oh God, I'm old. Uh, <laughs> you're so young, you people. Um, it was, I got really into the theory of dubbing. I was really fascinated, with, and I was trying to figure out why the dubbing was so bad. Um, and being from a family of people who did this for a living, it was, it was a, a conversation we could actually have is why, is, why are the yeah. dubs bad? They don't have to be. And how does one make them good? And, and so I, I sat with friends and family and other uh, actors and producers and writers, like people who are, man, I went to school with some crazy talented people, some of whom are doing some amazing stuff. Um, the school of Max Brooks, for God's sake. Uh, Made the zombie survival. Yeah, uh, yeah. Dude's so smart. It's yeah. crazy. Uh, and we talked about it, and we eventually started dubbing our own anime in school. And, like, this was before the age of, like, Macintoshes that did anything. So we, like, had to get, like, tape, yeah. tape and, and cut and paste. And um, I started making fan dubs. And, but we didn't really have the internet yet in the way that we do now. So I was really just kind of making them for me and putting them on VHS tapes and showing them to my friends. Uh, which was now, in hindsight, an awful lot of work for very little output. <laughs> um, tens of people will see my work. Tens! <laughs> Baker's dozens! Uh, and eventually that led to work with a company called New Generation Pictures that was doing the, the early Genion and, uh, New Genera and, and Pioneer dubs and started doing work for them and slowly started doing voiceover work in anime and realizing like, oh wow, I can act again even though I have funny hair. Yeah. Which, you can't have funny hair if you're an actor. I have no. so many wonderful friends who I grew up with who are like punk rock kids who are really great and I'm like, I'm gonna become an actor and one week later you see them with a little brown hair, mm -hmm. a little brown hair mm -hmm. and a haircut mm -hmm. and you're like, oh. And you're like, oh, they've embraced oh. the acting life. Oh, Samson, oh. Yeah. Yes, it is sad, yeah. but. Well, that, it is good, no, that is true though about like the, the whole acting thing, like, for example, you also can't have like really fun tattoos and things like that. It's tricky to work around the tattoo. Yeah. You have to work out, which as you can yeah. obviously tell is not something I'm a big fan of. <laughs> uh, 
it's, uh, there, it's, it's, I'm amazed that there are people who are like, I'm going to, who like try and become actors because they think it's going to be an easy way to make money. Right. And, and it's not and get notoriety. And it's <laughs> just like, why is that? Just get a law degree. Just, just, oh, you yeah. Know, get a law degree, work for like five years and buy a boat. Yeah. And at it. least there's like a career trajectory there. Whereas like, you never know with acting. No. Well, and it, it, it's akin to like trying to become like famous for being one of the great survivors of the zombie apocalypse. It's <laughs> like, you can put a lot of effort and work into it, but unless there's a zombie apocalypse happening, you're pretty much just going to be like a creepy guy living in a cabin. Yeah. Uh, until there are actual zombies to yeah. kill. Yeah. And so you just got to like hope that the zombie apocalypse happens. Yeah. Like, say, your D&D &D game yeah. turns into a thing on the yeah. internet. Uh, like, did, I mean, just, I, I don't want to, like, jump too much into that right this very second, but, like, that, to me, is yeah. so crazy that, like... It, 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 it confirms the, the theory that, like, half, half the work that one, well, not even half, that, like, there's, a, there's an aspect of luck to this rib. Yes, yes. You, you have, you have, and most actors have this, not all of them, but right. most half, actors have a deep respect for luck. And the idea that 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 luck is a you, luck is an is an integral factor of your reality because you probably grew up with like fifteen or sixteen people. Mm -hmm. I went to I went to school with at least I can think of off the top of my head four or five actors who still to this day are way more talented than I am, yeah. and I work way more than they do, and they're way better than I am uh, by leaps and bounds. <laughs> uh, to points of deep intimidation, and I have, by no means unearned, but I have more. I have a, a stronger career going right now than they all do combined, if they are still acting at all. Mm -hmm. And that is, I think, most actors. Most actors knew like three or four people. Yeah, were like, it's true. Why am I, I doing mean, this, and you're not? I mean, there definitely is an element of luck to it. However, you also don't just act. No, you you branched out and, and found ways. But like to, even as a work. but even as a kid, I worked all the time. Yeah, and I knew kids who were. I mean, and I had I had things I did very well. And it's it, it's also it's not just luck. It's also the the luck is 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 the secret ingredient that adds to the an enormous amount of work, preparation, and skill that you put into it. Like you do all the work, you do all the preparation, you get all the skills together, you do all the work, and then you sit and wait for something to happen, mm -hmm. and hope. Um, mm -hmm. And if you haven't done all the work, preparation, and skills, then you wait for something to happen, it happens, and you never work again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the end. Yeah, that's true. That's and true. And that happens to a lot of, yeah. that happens to the lazy people. I watch, <laughs> I watch the lazy people, like, like book one gig and never work again. Yeah. And, now, you were saying that, that some of the early stuff that you were doing in terms of actually voice acting was fan dubbing, because you were super into this idea. Super into it. Of, of dubs. Um, I worked on a friend's fan dub of, oh, God, let's see if the, the, the other older people in the crowd. Uh, Gundam 0080 or oh, Pocket. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, yes. of that. Mm. I vaguely remember that. Uh, a, I directed a fan dub of the first two episodes of Evangelion, <laughs> uh, which is still exists in VHS form mm. and runs around. It's, I'm, do you still have it? I do. We, we got like Roddy McDowell to do the voice of Fiyutsuki. It's like insane. What? I know, like, welcome to the, the only in LA. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, and then I did a fan dub of I did I started a Rama fan dub that never went anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, I did a DNA squared fan dub that kind of came together. We had a few problems, mm -hmm. um, and then by that point I was working professionally. Actually, as a, uh, as, a, a as a dub. Now you okay? So you said you directed the Evangelion fan dub. So when I did. you so when you got into dubbing, did you jump right into also like being the ADR director? Um, yeah, I was I was. I was a very weird kid. I, I wasn't. I was kind of an alien. Uh, it's it's an interesting. It's an interesting. Uh, I'm on an island. This works out yeah. well. Yeah. Interesting things happen on cultural islands where where you just kind of like sit and put a whole bunch of stuff together and see what happens. And it's very interesting to like grow up as a child completely divorced from the whole notion of what children are supposed to behave like, other than the fact that you are occasionally paid to pretend to be a child. <laughs> Yeah. Which are these things that you haven't really interacted with, but you, uh, you like to give you these versions of them that you're like, okay, I can, right, I can fake right. this. But um, I was, I, I, one of the reasons why I, I worked a lot as a kid, other than the fact that I looked like a strawberry. Like, if you've seen the strawberry commercial, I mean, like, you know, I, <laughs> I was a little Aryan youth child. It was, it was, it was kind of horrifying. Mm -hmm. um, was that I didn't complain. I didn't 
make problems. I didn't wander off. I learned my lines. I showed to work on time. Mm -hmm. I didn't have really have many like my hobbies were chill and, and together. I was I was a kid who at six months could sit quietly in the movie theater, and I was I like I would show up and do the work and right. actually be able to communicate with the adults in a reasonable level and mm -hmm. like perform as expected. And I was like as a kid, I was really into that. I was really into the idea of like acceptance of like mm -hmm. of like of like adult praise was a very powerful part of my reality yeah. um it was a little weird but uh, so that i got hired a lot because i knew that like a lot of the problem with working with kids is like you just don't know what's going to happen and i was really really good at selling myself as kind of a predictable child <laughs> well like being on set and you have like four people having like a little like weird over there and you're like i'm i can't apologize enough i'm so sorry and like yes. that's literally coming out of my my mouth like you as a as like a five-year-old has anybody seen Mr. Mom? Show of hands. Uh, my mom. My, my mom. <laughs> there, there, got one. there's a line of dialogue that people quote to me on occasion, and it's one of my favorite lines of dialogue. I don't think I've ever told this story oh. on the stage. Um, one of the lines of dialogue I say in that movie is, is, "Can I have a moment to myself, please?" Can I have a moment to myself, please? Like they take the booby away. Right, like, can right. I have a moment? And I, that was actually I couldn't remember my line, and that's actually how I talked as a child. That was just like that was like pure. Can I have a moment to myself, please? Like that was like, right. like at six. Uh, yeah. So I was I was a I was a freak of nature. <laughs> um, you were like a. I, it, it sounds like a, watching Dakota Fanning being interviewed <laughs> as like a little kid. You know what I mean? Like she's yeah, it's no. that same sort of like it's like you're talking to an adult. No, I, and like I, I did a bunch of like I did a couple of uh, Freaky Friday movies too. Oh so wow! Like, oh yeah, no, like, I was really good at pretending to be an adult stuck in a kid's butt. Like, I had, yeah, yeah, that came very naturally. There, there's an amazing stories that. episode where I'm Emmett Walsh just smoking cigars and driving motorcycles at nice. like nine, and it's nice, nice. I'm very proud of that. So, so once you started getting into uh, you know working professionally in the the anime dubbing world, when did you get to a point where you were like? this is my career like did you have any like jobs in between when you were like small time when you were like when you were child actor to the gap before you started getting back into working in the entertainment industry yeah i uh i i had i mean because it's la and every, like la is weird you just assume that whatever you're doing you're going to be doing for the next five years and then you're going to have to figure out something else um because that tends to be true I, I don't know how it is out here uh i can't even imagine uh this reality but in, in LA you assume anything you that any job you get the company you're working for is either going to be gone or they're just going to decide they want someone else really soon um, and it's only gotten more so since the internet uh, but I did it in between acting on stage and like the anime was kind of starting and kind of going it wasn't really any money and it was it was not even my my I lived in downtown Los Angeles in like an apartment so iffy that like it had a I lived in the Asbury Apartments. I had a I had a, a, a Murphy bed that folded in the wall that oh, still had geez. the blood stain from the murder of the previous tenant. Yeah, <laughs> I was a goth kid. I love that bed. Um, yeah, no, I'm like, oh yeah, I saw it. I, I, I had a view of MacArthur Park, so like, literally, oh my god, literally at night, like, oh, it's so pretty. Oh, guy just got shot. Turn off the lights. They're gonna try and question us. Oh god. Oh god. Yeah. Oh, that's just there's this jam. There's no head anymore. Uh, uh, oh, Halloween. Um, so I, I worked at a video store, okay. a Japanese import video store okay. for a while. Um, I worked at a company called Icons Authentic Replicas, making prop lightsabers mm -hmm. for a while, uh, which got very weird. And I also worked uh, for a Japanese import-export company for several years. I lived in Japan on and off for two years, uh, working for a company called The Joy Store, uh, which sounds... Right. Iffy. It was iffy, but it was, uh, we, we were doing import export of like Ray Earth dolls and Sailor Moon toys. Oh, and, like, yeah. Uh, Gundam action figures and like moving a lot of stuff back in the day. We, we were a deal. I did, I was a vendor at a lot of conventions and, uh, uh, back in the 90s and, uh, lived in Japan for a couple of years and then also did work for like Brutus Magazine in Japan and for like the Japanese ecological. I did all sorts. I had like a whole bunch of odd jobs to try and stay in Japan and not right, lose my right. permit. 
Uh, I had really long blonde hair at the time, so like they would hire me for the stupidest stuff. Yeah, right. yeah, no, it's funny. I, I feel like I've seen. I was watching a movie for a talk of movie anatomy, which I do with um, Michelle. Sometimes I've guessed about it. We were watching like a live action movie that was supposed to take place in Rome, and there were all of these extras that were. It was like they just put out a call and they're like, "Hey, if you're white, come be in our movie." <laughs> Yeah, no, like being blonde and dumb used to be a thing yeah. you could do in, in You can't do that anymore in Japan. They're, yep. they're not really into it anymore, but it was, there was a time yep. that it was enough. All right. I'm going to let you take some Periscope questions for a second here just because I have to... Yeah, and, and if anybody like raises yeah, their hand, like, questions. please interrupt yeah, me yeah. and like let me go. I'll go off on a tangent. Yeah, be, does does, does the internet like, have any, in any questions about anything, by the way, if you if you put anything up? Um, awesome shirt, Talison. Can I, yes, this is a Gilmore's Glorious Good shirt from Critical Role. We sell them on the... They may be out of print now, but maybe they'll come back. I don't know. They just give these. Um, do I have any tattoos? I want to say the Rocky Horror joke, but no, I don't, which was, which is the wow, wow, mom, wow. No, but no, I don't have any tattoos, although I'm thinking of getting one. Um, what has been my favorite role? I will, okay, you're coming, you're coming up. Um, live action or, or well, voiceover live action. Voiceover, I have two favorite roles at this point, which is I've gotten to play The Flash for Mortal Kombat versus DC, and like being a comic book nerd, ah, um, I I like I was in that session for for the Flash for Mortal Kombat versus DC way back when, and uh, I couldn't keep my mouth shut about how happy I was. Like they had to like I probably slowed that session down because I was just so hyped and ridiculous. Um, what is my is my favorite dubbed anime? That well. Okay, I'll tell you what favorite dubbed anime um, that I directed is probably R.O.D. the TV with maybe Helsing or Beck as like uh, Helsing, Helsing OVA, Beck, Mongolian Chop Squad, R.O.D. the TV always fight for my favorites. Ones that I didn't direct, I'm a really big fan of the old school Generator Gull dub, which is kind of old now, I know. Um, I love Cowboy Bebop uh, as a dub. Um, I uh, got uh, like I've got a whole bunch of favorite dubs. I love good dubs. Uh, uh, S Speed Graffer is a great dub, uh, especially if you like dark stuff uh, and you want to see some really really dark messed up anime where everything is sad and everyone dies and it's awful. Um, I'm trying to think of a couple others. Uh, uh, advice to have for someone who wants to be the official artist of Critical Role. Um, Find, hunt down, and eat the heart of Kit Bus. No, just kidding. Um, uh, that we, we we're, we're kind of a family. We're kind of official. You're all. We, we love you all. So make art. Uh, yes. Do you have like what was it like working on like Helsing for the first time, the TV show, and of course Helsing Ultimate? Oh boy, um, Helsing. <laughs> has, every, has anybody here seen Helsing? Does people know Helsing? Oh boy. Uh, okay. Helsing is a Japanese cartoon about a vampire uh, living in England that we started, I, it was a manga first off, uh, and then they made a 13 episode OVA back in the uh, 90s or early yeah, 2000s. It was, it was like early 2001. 2001 was the 13 episode TV run, and literally they had created a two minute um, animated preview for it that they ran an anime expo of just just an animation test and literally I was in the audience when they ran it I saw it I was a little goth kid at the time yeah, at the time very gothy I ran over to, to Pioneer who or they just become Jenny on and just said like I want that that's fine uh, like like that was basically what happened where it was like that that show is fine you're just gonna give it to me and I'm gonna do it it'll be fine uh, and then proceeded to spend the next six 14 years uh, dubbing it on and off. Um, it was amazing. Uh, it's an amazing uh, cartoon if you've, if you've never seen it. It's, it's violent, wonderful horror. Uh, skip the original TV series, just go straight to the OVAs is my recommendation. It's got Nazis, it's got vampires, it's got Nazis who are vampires, it's got uh, vampire Nazis, werewolf Nazis, uh, crazed, 13-year-old boy, dimension-hopping Nazis. Uh, Scottish priests. Scottish priests who, while are not Nazis, are still kind of awful. Uh, 
Italian Italian Vatican bastards who are evil and cut things up and uh, it's it's a lot of fun it's ultra violent it's ultra silly and it's and like and I'm very proud of the dub there's stuff in there that I'm just really 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 proud of and we managed to more or less keep the same cast over a decade which is unheard of um, it was also some of the first work of Crispin Freeman if anybody's into their voiceover actors when he came to oh he's he's an amazing sweetheart we love Crispin and like <laughs> And before Helsing, he had kind of done nothing but really silly, kind of fun characters, and we were like, we're going to do something amazingly crazy, and you're going to be licking blood off the floor. It'll be great. Um, Helsing was very punk rock, and there's lots of, like, I, I wouldn't even know where to begin with, like, stories of the insane, the insane punk rock reality that was making Helsing, and, like, just uh, back when I was younger and mm -hmm. capable of, of being punk rock. Uh, punk rock is for the youth. Uh, <laughs> I... Yeah. What did I miss? Conversations about uh, Helsing. Helsing. Right? Well, and it was and like and like there was like weird technical levels to what we did with Helsing, which were always kind of. It was the first time we tried to put two actors. Very rarely do you put two actors in a booth for anime. Oh yeah, at the same time. Did um, you do that in Helsing? We did it twice. Um, we did it once with uh, mm -hmm. if depending on how hardcore people are about their Helsing. Um, the uh, vampires in the very very beginning, uh, mm -hmm. Leaf and Jessica, the two the two. Oh yeah yeah. Uh, where, and where I played Leaf with a Cockney accent that was so bad, it was so it bad. It could not have been worse than uh, than Bert's in Mary Poppins. My I had I had I had, I had I had relatives <laughs> in England call me up and say, "We just saw that. Never do that again." Oh, uh, I was like, burn. right, right. Uh, but that was great because it was my friend Ananda Bonk who played, who's mm -hmm. this amazing. She's now like a this amazing singer. She's in a band in Colorado that's very well known. Nice, she's a big punk rock chick. Nice. Uh, and we we were like had this like kill a family and then make out and have naughty time in their in the like their corp on top of their corpses. Ah. It was a whole. It's it's Helsing. Helsing. Hey. <laughs> uh, and yeah. like so we both got blow tops. We were both we did that we did the ah. scene in the, in the room together and we both had blow tops. So so it was just this. Oh, oh, no. oh, oh, oh. I was just like inches away from my brother. I was going, oh, oh, oh. Uh, yeah. which God is even funnier if you know her. Um, but and then the other one were the Valentine brothers, uh, Jan, Jan, and Jan, and uh, we they the, for their little walking towards the towards the uh, uh, the complex. We had the two of them in the room together, which was pretty, which was pretty fun. Uh, one of whom is now Patrick Seitz, who is in everything and oh, is yeah. directing World of Warcraft. He's one of the directors of World of Warcraft. He's crazy. And Josh Phillips, who is another punk rock crazy singer. We had a lot of singers on Helsing, like people yeah. who, like uh, Katie Gray, who's the voice of Sarah's Victoria, travels all over and is touring with her, her band. Nice. A lot of fun. The, the, the blow pop story made me think, do you, like, do you have any other like weird like tricks that you did to, to create sort of efforts and just sort of the random noises that you have to make sometimes when it's not just straight up lines? Uh, I once threatened an actor with a baseball bat. That was a terrible idea. <laughs> uh, yeah, method, method's a terrible idea. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 we, we've, we've grown up. Um, for Nia Under 7, we used to try to describe like, like the awkward surprise sound uh -huh. that people make. And we, we, used to, we used to call it, call it the um, angry duck. Angry duck. Ah. Oh. Um, which was always fun. Working yeah. with kids was also always fun. Trying to get them to do all the weird, weird sounds, sounds. Um, especially because they were usually like eleven to thirteen years old. Which okay. is why, like, you'd be like two hours in, and then like you're not. You're trying really hard not to say anything or think about it, and it's just the, and like finally, like this thirteen-year-old kid goes. In the right context, this is really perverted and weird. You know that, right? And I'm like, I know, yeah. I know. Just, just keep going. Like, just pointing it out. Okay. Yeah, direct. I feel, I feel like it's interesting, like, because directing for a film or even directing something where you've got a whole bunch of voice actors all together in one space, I feel like it's got to be so different. It's so di like the, the vacuum of having one person, like, as a conversation between four people where you record one person at a time. That they've possibly never met yeah. anybody else in the room and never will. Uh, it is a slow, grueling. I mean, like you can do a lot because you can like take your time right. and do these really complex setups, but it's it's grueling. It's slow, and you don't know if it's going to work until it's over, which is really scary. Um, and especially, I love working with kids, and it was always fun to do this with kids too, because they're like, you're going to get weird stuff, and it's you're going to and you're going to hope that it's going to work because it's all a little off because they're they're kids. Um, yeah. 
Do you have a, a like favorite project that you've gotten to direct or one that you were particularly proud of what you accomplished? We, we kicked that around a bit, and it's, um, it's a triumvirate of Helsing, Beck, and, and R.O.D. the TV. For those of you who haven't seen, Helsing's the vampire yeah. show, and as long as you're okay with literally, I think we have an on-screen body count of several million. Yeah. Like, there, there is a sequence in the show where we actually have a like wave of dead bodies that drown people. There's like they bury London in four stories worth of just cadavers, um, and there's 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 a couple scenes that are really iffy in Helsing. Uh, <laughs> um, we yeah, I, yeah yeah we 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 bugger corpses. Bad things happen. Do you have any projects that you really wanted to direct that you have yes. not had a chance to yes. do so? Yes. <laughs> any any in particular that really you know sting? Yes. <laughs> um, no, no, because I don't want to take away. Like, like yeah. there, there are. I will say, in, in the, there are two projects that really are, that that are a little stingy. But right. I, I very specifically don't talk about yep. them because yep. I have friends who worked on them and, and they know my feelings and like. Yep. There's 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 no there's no worse thing to be like I could have done it better. Yeah, no, that's true. Man. So okay, so the, so then let me ask you this instead: if let's say you know the sky's the limit, they were rebooting, so they were going to redub something. Like, is there something that you would want to direct, or is there something that you would like desperately want to do the voice of a specific character? In? And I know a lot of the time with anime too, like you do actually get to be characters and also be the director. Yeah. Yeah. I, although I tried not to do that. I just fail miserably. <laughs> like, I, I hate being in, in, like, it's really, really awkward to be an actor in a booth and not have a director because... Mm -hmm. Uh, has any, anybody ever done any voiceover work of any mm -hmm. kind or like radio or like yeah. radio? Have you guys like, ever seen it? See the internet? Okay. Like it had, like, yeah. you know. All right. So you're aware of what your voice sounds like when you're listening it, to it back. Yeah. I did a lot. I did like something Nice. It, it's horrifying, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. No, and everybody feels that way. Yeah. Like it, that is universal. You listen to yourself back on tape, no matter who you are, and, you're, and there's just that moment of. Mm. Oh, is that what I sound like? Oh. Yeah. I've maybe had three moments in my life where I'm like, okay, I'm okay with that. Yeah. Um, any Marvel, any Marvel comic. Okay. Product oh, ever, okay. There you go. Nice. Ever, I would direct that to to death. Like any any Marvel comic product. Mm -hmm. um, also, weirdly, if they ever reboot, um, uh, this is this is I'm I love I love girly anime. Girly anime is the best. <laughs> and if they ever make a new version of either the Rose of Versailles, oh my god, I love Rose I of would, Versailles. I, I would be on that so hard. Uh, Rose of Versailles, oh. Legend of Galactic Heroes, or okay. Candy Candy are like my okay. three like all time. Hoo -ha. You guys, Rose of Versailles. If you've not seen it, it's all on Crunchyroll. You have no excuse. Yeah. It's amazing. I mean, Oscar! Yeah, it's like it's literally. It's like the about, internet's like, thank you. I would yep. direct. I would direct it. I would direct it like diamond. It, is, it would be no, like pounded with a diamond. It's literally about a. It, well, it's about Marie Antoinette and her like <laughs> bodyguard. Is, an is it? So it's an anime about Marie Antoinette and her, and bodyguard, her bodyguard. Like cross is a woman dressed cross as a man. Dresses as a man and named named of, like, Oscar. Yes, Lady Oscar. Lady Oscar. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, I love. I love. Oh. Uh, and Marie Antoinette, she's just, oh, she's, she's so fabulous. Yes. She's terrible. Oh, I love it. it's so good. It's so good. No, fantastic. I have an expensive statue for <laughs> Do you really? <laughs> I, do. Uh, I, have, I have like an Oscar that's like that. That's oh, amazing. Yep. Uh, I discovered that after my Revolutionary Girl Lieutenant obsession. I, I was, I was the cosplay judge at Anime Expo the year that the, that the Rose of Versailles cosplayers oh, won. Oh, nice. was, was, like, was like, oh my God, it's all hand stitched. <laughs> You're crazy people. Yeah. Um. <laughs> and you would you would have had that you would have uh, said that they won anyway. You know, honestly, weirdly, it was it was the fact that it was historically accurate and that they had that, that they had done so much hand yeah. hand embroiderment. Yeah. I'm like, oh, you're like, uh, I would have I would have picked you anyway, but this is out of control. Yeah, no, they they had it coming. Like yeah. every, like everybody else was like, oh, yeah, damn it. Yeah. Did you have a question? You you seemed eager, like you were tentatively raising your hand. No. No, just going back off of the first mm. thing. I was just really curious because I've asked people. At different panels, like I've already heard this question asked. Yeah. I was very curious if you if you ever had that moment when you were recording something. Like, it has to be near the beginning. It has to be either like your within your first two or three things that you do, and you do it, and you're like, that was really good. And then you walk away, and then you see it like sometime later, like a year later or so. Then you don't even recognize. Yeah. Um, oh, it wasn't even the first two. It was, uh, it was the, the first round of, of uh, World of Warcraft uh, characters that I did. And like I recorded, the, I recorded everything for World of Warcraft for my first run of it in two hours. And I remember very little about the session because I was so nervous and so 
there was a whole bunch of weird drama in, in my reality at the time, and there was a whole bunch of stuff happening at the time, and I was um, having, I was having deep and intense insecurities about life on multiple levels. And so like, and like it had been like one of the biggest video game booking I had at that point. And I was convinced that the casting director and the director really didn't like me. And I like, for various reasons, I had built this up in my head and like, oh, I was just so much stupid. And at the time, like the materials for World of Warcraft weren't, weren't they were super polished now, but they weren't super polished back then. So it was like, I was a little lost and didn't really know what they wanted. And they were like, they knew what they wanted. They were, it was just, I was just a mess. And I did all this stuff. It was two hours, and it was like it was practically a blackout. Like what happened, and then still to this day, I, like occasionally I'll be at a friend's house and they're playing, or like I'll be like, "Oh God, is that me? Did I do that? Oh my God, this is this whole quest line? I have no memory of recording this, but that's obviously me." Or like I'll be listed as like I'll be credited as something. And I'm like I don't remember recording that in the in the slightest, and it doesn't sound like me to to, to my ears, but. I'll let him go into the book. I'm like, no, I did it. It was a thing. There it is. Um, and the, on the, the version of that that happens later in your career is like sometimes I'll leave a booth thinking that was the worst thing I've ever done. I can't believe I just put that down on tape. I sounded awful. Uh, I am embarrassed by the whole process that just happened. And right. I want to I crawl under a rock and never admit that I did that. <laughs> and then like two years later, the game comes out. I'm like, oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> I know because that is the thing with a lot, especially with video games. You'll uh, record them forever before they ever actually come out. I, I'm I'm under NDAs right now of projects I've worked on that will not be released until 2018. Jeez. Yes. Where I have done, I've completed projects that I've done, I've been yes. paid for, and I will not be able to tell anybody about them until I'm over 40. <laughs> do you ever do you ever have like weird code names for people that you like can't tell them what it is? Back when I posted more on the internet about what I was, like, when I was directing, because I would, like, back when I journaled on Facebook, right. I, I created code names <laughs> for all the games. When I, when I journaled on Facebook. When I Yeah, before Twitter and all that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I would have code names for the games I was working on so that I could actually talk mm -hmm. about work and, like, like you know, a code name Evil Grandma Betty or... Uh, right. Yeah. Or Skull Crusher or whatever, you know. And I would just have, like, yeah, code names for all the yeah. games. So I'd yeah. be like, today on Skull Crusher this happened. Yeah. Right. But, right. So obviously, you know, you were you were a child actor, and then you decided you need to actually be a child. You were a goth kid for a while, and then you got back into the entertainment industry. So now, I think if you are a child actor, don't become a child. It's yeah, it's, it's, don't it's a child. Don't do it. It's, it's not a, worth it's it. It's a trick. Walk away. It's a trap. Uh, Nothing to be found there of value. No. Okay. So, but now, of course, obviously, you know, one of the the most uh, prevalent parts of your career is professional Dungeons and Dragons. I'm not professional Dungeons and Dragons. Player. Now, did you where where did Dungeons and Dragons fall into your life before, or was it just the campaign for Liam's birthday that you started? No, well, I was uh, I was a goth kid, um, right? And a goth kid in the late '90s and mid '90s meant that you did this thing called vampire larping. Ah. Uh, <laughs> Including, I actually, I played some Vampire the Masquerade when I lived in Japan. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember uh, that game. Yeah, we had, I was, I was, Is that I was the one that's, like, set in New Orleans? No, you, well, they have every city. Okay. They, had, they had source books for every city. Okay. And you would just, like, walk around and you had, basically had very, very complex versions of, of, of uh, rock, paper, scissors that yeah. would decide who was gother than thou. <laughs> uh, and, like, little, and, like, we had, we had some great game. We played, uh, there was a, there was a really great game uh, run, run by our friend Don over by the, uh, oh. Mormon Temple for a while oh, wow. in Westwood. If you know LA, maybe you don't know LA, but there's, we had a great, we had a few great games to play at UCLA, um, and we were all over the place. I, and I loved LARPing Vampire; it was great. And then I also played some. We had like our nerd kids from the anime club in high school, mm -hmm. and we played riffs, and we played, uh, uh, God, just tons of stuff. Yeah. I'm trying to even think of all the uh, GURPS. I had some crazy like create your own anime role-playing game book when I was a kid that had like different character archetypes and stuff. <laughs> we, we had the Rumiko Takahashi, uh, oh. kind of like getting like some deep cut stuff. Yep. We had the Rumiko Takahashi American, uh, like Rama, Rama Lengauf, yeah. Urusei Atsura, uh, uh, role-playing game called Teenagers from Outer Space. It was called Teenagers from Outer Ooh. Space. It was okay. an amazing game. If you can ever find a copy of it and you like tabletop role-playing, that was like, mm -hmm one of the best times we've nice. had. It's like, it's one of my favorites still. Yeah. So out of print. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah. Uh, 
So, so you were no you were no stranger then to the uh, the tabletop role playing game. No, and I was like, and then America Online came on, and I was one, like one of those idiots in the chat rooms who was like play, like doing like the vampire larping in chat. I, oh boy, oh, <laughs> I'm so glad no one has records of any of that. I don't know how you, you people under twenty deal with it anymore. Uh, <laughs> you're so you're in such trouble. Um, and then I t continue to kind of sort of play with friends just because right. L A. One of the other beautiful things about L.A., besides the fact that it's filled with people who are way prettier than you will ever be and way smarter than you will ever be, both at the same time, and you, and you get to walk among them, <laughs> uh, is that there was a very weird and interesting nerd contingency in L.A. that has slowly blossomed. Oh, yeah, you've all noticed. We've, took, we've taken over the media entirely. Oh, yeah. Like, we won. It's a good time to the be here. The cultural wars are over. We yep. won. <laughs> uh, and that's awesome. But... Because of that, there's just there's so many people who kept playing D and D, and so many people who kept playing tabletop games and doing all this fun stuff. Uh, that that community was like there was a lot of people in that community doing like just the cosplay was really really big, the tabletop gaming was really really big, and like it never went away. Yeah. And because it was always sort of in the industry to begin with, it never had to stop. Right. Um, no one ever told me I had to start being an adult. So you just didn't start? Yeah, no, it never really came up. Yeah. Um, and hasn't so far. Mm -hmm. Like, the closest thing that's happened so far is somebody finally set me down and was like, you're going to need to hire an accountant one day. You realize that. Oh, yeah. Ah. Yeah, and a dentist. Oh. Um, that is good. That, I mean, I feel like it's a, it, you've really made it in life, though, when someone's like, you know what? Mm, your D&D &D game is too successful. You're going to need to hire an accountant. Yeah, <laughs> no. Well, it's, I mean, and the D&D &D game is, is fascinating because that was not even the first... All right, another another reality check. And again, like, feel free, feel free, and I'll keep vaguely looking this yeah. direction. I'm so sorry. Um, We're not ignoring you. We point, promise. Like, raise your hand even in the middle of the sentence, and once I run out of breath, I will go off on your tangent because I love tangents. <laughs> tangents are magical. Uh, we find things there. Yeah. The game that we were playing, and I'm going to try. Does everyone know Critical Role mm -hmm. in this room? Or do you guys not know Critical? Okay, you guys okay, do know Critical. Critical Role fans. All right. I love your hat, by the way. I've been mean, like really. You got like you've got like a vague pseudo Agent Carter thing going on. It's really. Yeah, I didn't know there was a con, but I was just so I grabbed. Oh, nice! Don't 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 you dare have style That's outside awesome. this building. That's not cool. Some of us only have T-shirts. Yeah, it's it was not... like it's it looks like the, the dress that she wears sometimes in the second season, and, and it's got the fedora. I totally I totally got the Agent. I'll Carter show you guys thing. later. I know. Yeah. I'm just like <laughs> Agents of Shield. Uh, yes. Yeah, it's a. It's not the first like weird industry game that I've played. It's yeah. not even the second. It's it like uh, like weird little, especially in the video game industry. A lot of people tabletop, and you play with a lot of people, and a lot of actors are kind of nerdy, and a lot of us played stuff. And then I've known Matt Mercer for a very very long time, and and he's one of the biggest nerds I've ever met. I <laughs> there are things that people will find on the internet one day that are just <laughs> like. He's younger enough than you that I feel like it's maybe a little well more well documented. Oh, it's there. Line. <laughs> every every now and then I like remind him like I know where that is. Just, please, do this. It's just like and just there, blackmail him someday. There there are things that one that will come out for like maybe the ten year anniversary. Yeah. Like, <laughs> critical. The ten year anniversary. You guys want to see role. something really inappropriate? Uh, yeah, no, it's a. Uh, but like we are, he was part of that like fun nerd group and yeah. like was awesome becoming a voice actor at the time and then like going into that nerd group and then we were playing we were in a D&D game for a while before the D&D game that became Critical Role and that was with just a bunch of like random industry people the writers and there was some hosts and there was some uh, game designers and some actors and it was just kind of a big mix of people yeah. and then that game kind of dissolved for various reasons uh, uh, as these things do and then the Liam game kind of happened but like Oh, the Liam game was so weird. It 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 happened once, and we're like, well, that's it. And then right. it kind of happened again. And then like I got busy and missed a few. And then like I came back and I'm like, okay, this is a thing now. And it kind of just we vaguely talked about putting it online as kind yeah. of a joke. Uh, and and then Geek and Sundry was like, we want to film your game. Yeah, well, I'm like, and it was down to the point where, where like, they came to, to, like, watch a game at mm -hmm. one point, and it was, and they, they came to watch possibly what was one of our 
most it was it was like our first big shopping ep- like mm-hmm. like game in a long uh, time. So okay. like, you guys literally watched us just play like Sim Home, like the Sim <laughs> Facebook game for like an hour while we were deciding what rooms to put in our in our in our building. Uh, and I was convinced they were going to watch us play and be like, "No, never mind, nah. this is a terrible idea. We should, no one's going to watch this for 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 four hours." Um, Which sometimes people do. I don't understand the world anymore. I'm so glad. <laughs> I'm so glad people watch. And and I'm, but yeah, I was not. Ex- I, it's it's great, and I yeah. love that people like it. And yeah. I'm uh, I'm so grateful for it. And it's so strange, but. I feel like it's just, I was going to say, I feel like it's just added another sort of layer to this whole, like, nerds one kind of thing. (laughs) Because I, because it's like, there are thousands of people who are so jazzed about Dungeons and Dragons. It's, uh, it's so amazing. And it, and I, and I genuinely believe it's really healthy. Yeah. It, it is, it is. that's another question. Does anybody in here? I know you guys play. Uh, yeah. does, any, does anybody else in here actually play D and do any tabletop role playing? Nice. Don't be shy. Raise your hands proudly, guys. I, I, I like. I like. And for the, for the for the internet who can't see this, there, there's there's a guy in the back who literally just raised up his player handbook, which was like, <laughs> yes. Thank you, man. Yeah. No, that was like represent. Um, it's so healthy and it's so much fun and it's such a good way to to like, especially if you have social issues of any kind. Uh, uh, or <laughs> it's a great way to deal with stuff when things are not going well. It's such a wonderful escape. Um, I can't recommend it enough. Uh, uh, depression is awful. <laughs> uh, we, yeah. I would like to think many of us know that. And uh, D&D is a great way of dealing with it mm-hmm. in a very healthy, productive way. Uh, and kind of getting out of yourself. It's, yeah. it's the it's the indoor kid version of why don't you take a walk for twenty minutes and get yeah. some fresh air. No, it's true, but you you can do that on a piece of paper with some dice. I'm like I do that, and I know it would help, but then my legs would hurt, and then because I just don't walk enough. And, mm-hmm. yeah, no, and I have to put on sunscreen because it's like sunny outside. Yeah. Do you have a question? No, I'll off of that. I mean, I've been a DM for five years. You actually met like one of my new D Oh. oh. Did he? Did he come to? The, did he or she come to the con, or did they come to the meetup uh, afterward? Or do you know? Um, uh, well, we should have that convention. You remember? You actually signed uh, her original. Um, one of one of my uh, players. Oh, very nice. She's an artist. Um, you had to get him on Twitter. I know the name. Yeah. Um, um, the question I wanted to ask you was, um, for me, my original playthrough, Alec, it really was the cemented us at it was really one of the most defining moments of my group friends because you know high school like you said being being a, a real kid sucks it's horrible it, it. no one told me it was awful yeah. <laughs> never do it and we were we were just an absolute group of misfits and some of us greatly disliked each other but i think at some point <laughs> there was there was a defining moment of you know people don't like us so we're gonna just like each other yeah no it's was there any of that in your group where you were like because of the group you guys all became really good friends I have a specific love of people who have the Power Rangers beep on their cell phone, yep. by the way. Like, like normally I'd be like, can you turn your cell phone off? But, like, no, Zordon needs things. Um, uh, so that's good. You can keep it on. I actually like hearing it. It makes me, it calms me. Uh, <laughs> yes, every game I've ever played. Um, I've never, I've never played a game just with people that I'm close to. It's always been with a group of people where I'm close to a couple people and I kind of know a bunch of people. And then there's like four people I've never really met. Like it's always that that kind of fun mix of like, I've got like a really really close friend who's running the game, and then like two people that I kind of know through them, or I kind of maybe know through them, even the LARPs, and then a bunch of people that I just don't have the slightest clue about. Um, uh, like even down in high school with the high school games, it was like there are people who are like I would have never met otherwise we just had nothing in common other than yeah. the fact that we played this game and it was, it was great and I'm still friends with a lot of those people which is really crazy um, and all of the wacky adventures that they get up to uh, with Critical Role it's interesting because we all knew each other from a work environment uh, well the, I was very very I was close with Matt because we had kind of had a weird we had kind of more of a less of a work relationship and more of a, of a fun relationship through through kind of the our, the nerd, the nerd reality, and then Marisha, I knew through him, 
because uh, when they started dating, I kind of got to know Marisha very well, and, and it's like genuinely, and I have, I have no bones saying she's one of my favorite people on God's green earth. It's like, mm -hmm. it's horrifying how cool that girl is. Um, it's, yeah, just it's <laughs> stupid. It's just stupid. Um, because we were prepared, because Matt is a is a little cinnamon roll, so like you know he starts dating somewhere like they show the slightest sign of any problem, we can have them killed, and, like, dropped <laughs> in the desert so fast because no one's hurting him, he's perfect. Uh, we like her though, um, and then and then Travis and Laura I knew from Texas because we had we had done some stuff together at Funimation, mm -hmm. but it always been work. I, I know I'm wrapping it up, and then mm -hmm. Orion I knew through Comic Con where we had like gotten some stuff together, and then Sam and Liam I knew because when they moved out from New York to L. A. Uh, I like watched them start their LA careers together and kind of watched it. So we all kind of knew each other in this vaguely. And then Ashley, I didn't know at all. Uh, and, like we had never met, although we have like strange things in common, which is yeah. really fun. But yeah, no, it was like very much like and just <laughs> sweat, squishy sounds. And here we are. And here we are. <laughs> um, Playing D and D on the internet every Thursday. I'm 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 I've, I've been told to wrap it up by by uh, Michelle, who can kill me. Um, she can. She is. Yeah, she has sherbet powers. Um, but uh, is there maybe one last question from yeah. the audience, or one last question for from the Periscope. internet um, from Periscope? And I may run the Periscope for a second anyway. Yeah. Uh, favorite system? I don't. Uh, fifth edition D and D. Although I have a lot of good uh, good memories of fourth edition. What's my favorite system? Uh, I love I love LARPing. I don't have the time or energy for oh, it anymore. Oh man! But uh, oh wow, lots of questions. Um, wow, what strange thing? I have the the child actor thing. Yeah, in, uh, and also yeah, and also actor. taste in films. I have very weird taste in film, and I promise, I'm, at some point, I'm going to go to my YouTube channel and start talking about film because yep. uh, it's magical. Give an audience question. Yes. Oh, hi, man. Oh no! I had the I had the option at Whitestone to put uh, would I would I ever would I had everything about retiring. First of all, I had the option at Whitestone, and I thought about it um, for various reasons of like leaving him in Whitestone and starting somebody else. That was like definitely something that crossed my mind. Um, I have a few more things I'd like to do with him, um, and we'll see if they happen and or if some other uh, things come up. He may die. No. Uh, <laughs> That in you two do weeks, have to live with that very real possibility. He may, I, I, I've, I've already thought through an option of what I will do if he dies. Like I actually mm -hmm. have an idea of like what I would like to do next. Right. Which I know is a little morose, and I'm like I'm not pushing for it or anything. But like I got a guy, like, like kind of similar to like like the whole theory of like when I built Percy in the first place. I've kind of got a like this sounds like a fun thing I've never done before, and mm -hmm. I bet Matt would let me do it. And it's not Percy at all, which right. is fun, uh, and. I'm 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 really like if I if I can figure out how to turn Percy into a nice person I would like to I would like him to die a nice person, uh, which at the moment would not happen. <laughs> He's not a nice person. Not in character for Percy oh. to die well, a nice he, person. He wants to be a nice person yeah. really badly. Yeah. Um, he really wants to be a good person. Yeah. Awesome. He's seen them. Yep. Uh, well, thank you guys so much for uh, coming out to the panel. Talison is still uh, studying Periscope over there. We can let that run for a little mm. while. But Talison, where can people? find you at the convention this weekend and beyond. I, I, am, I am very easy to find. You can find me at my booth uh, at uh, booth 911. Is, Is that, that really your booth number? I know. Because <laughs> um, it's an emergency. Uh, I'm there with, with a bunch of Street Fighter actors and we're all also like like weirdly all the Street Fighter people we, we all hang out a lot and we, we're, we're, we're all nerds and play D&D also yeah. so we all talk about them. and also the library bards who are amazing and fun and Body Gordon, Body Gordon who you should meet because she's amazing and she's a voice actress and she's a singer and she's awesome um, and, and, and we're right next to which cosplayer? Uh, uh, you're right next to Vampy Bit Me Vampy Bit Me yeah. who's uh, fabulous and adorable and has a giant line and you can always find, like, just find the giant yeah. line of people with, with photos it's great yep, yep. Awesome. She's awesome. Sweet. Uh, yeah, you can find me there. You can find me on Twitter at Executive Goth, uh, like the uh, uh, like uh, um, uh, you, know, you know Weirdo Goth, yeah. Executive Goth, Travel the World, be spooky. Right. Um, sorry, sorry, Periscope. And <laughs> you're looking at the ceiling of the convention center. It's really I feel exciting. so awful. <laughs> Hi, Xander. I love you. Hey. And uh, yeah, you can, and also I have a Tumblr, which occasionally I post to. Uh, oh, it wow. happens. I have a Tumblr. Also, wow. exe uh, Executive Goth on Instagram, and uh, you can watch on Thursday nights. You can watch me. 
play D and D. Yay! Um, and be stupid. It's great. Awesome. All right, yeah. sweet. Well, Talison, you're awesome. Guys, stick around, uh, because coming up very shortly here, we have a fantastic Power Rangers panel moderated by the aforementioned Xander Genre. And this is this is this is Emma Fai on Hi, Twitter. I'm Emma Fife. You and can, you should, you yeah, should totally you can find me, super, super friend of the uh, show. You can find me on Twitter at Emma Fife. It's my name, E M M A F Y F F E. And for the rest of you, you can find me running and around. I will like periscope. A crazy person I will periscope again sometime in Hawaii. I promise, so, guys, and I will actually like pay attention and, and answer some questions. You guys rock. In the right place. Uh, probably see you Thursday. Bye, probably. guys. <laughs> Thanks, Xander.